Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look under the hood of IKEA's SEO strategy, their million dollar strategy. This has allowed them to create 180 plus million monthly organic traffic just from Google alone. This is a famous SEO case study. And I wanted to crack it open for you because I think there are secrets here that you need to be implementing, especially if you own an e-commerce website or are managing one, especially it's SEO. We're gonna be looking particularly at three primary strategies that IKEA has used to skyrocket their traffic, including on-page SEO, a perfect on-page checklist that they're doing to just grow traffic incredibly well. Second, their internal linking strategy. We'll be taking under the hood and looking at a little bit of how they're doing their internal linking so well to create this traffic growth. Then we're gonna check out a few other SEO tips and tricks that they have in store for us by looking at their keywords, looking at their landing pages and diagnosing their backlinks. So let's jump in and check it out. So right off the bat, we can check out IKEA on SEO Rush and we can see they have 177 million organic search traffic. So this is a beast of a website. They're also doing some page search. We see they've really grown over the pandemic. Um, they had a slight decline, but still, I mean, this is insane traffic. Uh, of course, they're gonna have a lot of branded keywords. So we're gonna dig into their keywords. What kind of keywords is this beast of a website actually ranking for? We can set it to UK, US, or anywhere. I'm gonna check out US right now because that's where I'm based. But we can check all over the world. First off, we can see IKEA has almost 5 million uh, searches per month or 6 million searches per month just in of itself. So we're gonna filter this just a little bit to exclude IKEA. And there's probably gonna be some variations we'll find of uh, that word, IKEA. Um, I'm sure people may spell it wrong. Um, so it looks like some people may accidentally click an M here, uh, but we'll see. Already we see number one rank rankings for such general terms as dresser. I mean, this is insane rankings here. We have dresser, couches, sofa, you know, these are over 200,000 searches per month, generating tens of thousands of traffic per month. I mean, absolutely insane rankings. We have sofa bed, all kinds of stuff in the sofa and bed niche is just a huge, huge industry. And we can see solid number one rankings. You can try couch, saw that on there. Solid, stable number one ranking. Absolutely amazing. So what did they do to achieve these rankings? These absolutely dominating Google in pretty much every way. Think about it. how did IKEA do this? Of course, they're a huge brand, so they're gonna have some competitive advantage there, but let's check out their SEO and we're gonna try to answer that question throughout this video. First off, we're gonna look at what pages are currently ranking. These are their collection pages. And we can see they have the keyword in the H1 of the page. If we look up here, they have the keyword in the title of the page. This is the title that actually shows up on Google. So this is what is called the meta title or the SEO title. And this is called the meta description. We can see that they have really thought this out. All of them are the correct length. You want this to be between 120 and 132 characters. They have a very nice length for their, uh, for their description. The title should be below 60 characters. And so very great little titles as well as H1s. And we can see overall, they have some internal links. They have some content. They still have some engaging images with even some unique uh, design work there, um, development work. And then they have their products. And so this is what your collection pages should be looking at. And then they have additional content at the bottom. So if you're building an e-commerce brand or if you are an established e-commerce brand, you need to have content at the bottom of your page as well as content at the top of your page. This is both for users, but it's really for search engines. It's for Google because Google can't uh, see, it can't see these images. It's gonna have a hard time figuring out what the page is exactly about to make sure it's relevant 
to the user surfing. And here, they know exactly what it's about. They can tell from the titles here, and at the bottom is pure SEO content, sleeper sofas, tells you what they do, what problems they solve. These are pre-purchase information, as well as adding additional internal links here. So we see that we have bed, we have sofa. These link to their other collection pages that they're trying to rank. These are two essential parts of SEO is content and links. Add content to your page, add links to your page, and you're pretty safe to go. We also have some internal links here for additional um, subcategories, so chair beds, these kind of things, which also have some SEO content as well. But since they are less of a focus for their SEO, they're not doing it as much, but you still see this content here. So first lesson we can learn from Ikea is use content on your collection pages. If these are the pages ranking for your SEO terms or that you want to rank, you should be using them with content on the page. Now we can get a little bit more diagnostic and look at their heading structure. Now don't get scared by the word heading structure, it's actually fairly simple. We can see that their first term with the keyword in it is an H1. This is just like, you know, MLA format back in school. Like you need your headings and your subheadings. You can tell this is a heading. This is a subheading below that. Google looks at these extensively to figure out the structure of the page and the importance of the different keywords on the page. And you can see this is beautifully done, beautifully done already. We have the main keyword, one H1, the main keyword in it, sofa beds, as well as sleeper, sleeper sofas, which we then have introducing your new guest room with H3s below that, which, let's see, these are actually these right here. So these bolded texts here that says Bar Slav. I'm probably butchering that, but, uh, you know, it's Swedish. Uh, these are all different products as H3s. And then they have their sort and filter that probably doesn't need to be an H2, nor does the result list here um, text, but not too big of a problem. And then each of their product names are H3s. And you see that they include these little slogans at the bottom. So they the H3 is this text and then also sleeper sofa. This text and then sleeper sofa. So this way they're getting a ton of keywords into their H3s. And Google weighs these keywords. So three seat storage, uh, sleeper sofa with chase. These are very thoughtful keywords within the heading tags. Google relies on heading tags to show the importance of the keywords on this page. And you see they're doing this very decisively. They want these in here. And then they have another H2 with H3s below it for additional products. And they have popular products, additional products there. And then their SEO content, which is also headings. You see here, an H2 sleeper sofas. H3s. Now, this is their on-page SEO. This is the content on the page. You want to make sure your website is structured in this way and will have great rankings. Let's take a step back. I wanted to discuss on-page SEO just real briefly for you. On-page SEO is the content on the page and really the HTML code. What you see when you right-click and click view page source. This is the code, the content, the hex that is on the page, which is crawled directly by Google and which Google use to understand the content of your page. On-page SEO is extremely important since this is everything that Google is getting directly from the page. This includes heading tags, it includes keywords on the page, text, the content, the quality of the content, and much, much more. You can see in this case study, we're going through a lot of Ikea's on-page SEO because it is so powerful, especially when you already have an established brand with a lot of backlinks. On-page SEO is in contrast with off-page SEO. Off-page SEO is everything outside of the website. So you have backlinks, referring domains, guest posts, link building strategies, all of these amazing things that I do on a daily basis, but that Ikea doesn't have to do as much considering their authority is naturally so large. 
This on-page SEO is really the quickest wins for an e-commerce store and e-commerce brand in 2024, considering that you don't have to invest huge amounts of money in link building strategies. You could take your existing content, format it better for search engines using the heading tags, the H1 to H6 tags we've talked about and really create a user experience that's great for users and a bot experience that is great for Google. This will allow you to grow traffic. It's really the quickest quick win because if you have thousands of pages, you can make sure your on page is good, all of them, and make sure that you have technically sound SEO on your collection pages, on your product category pages, and on your product pages. Of course, blogs, we can't forget those. Now, another aspect of on-page SEO is the internal links. And we'll get into that here. We see internal links to all their different types of sofas. Their sleeper sofas. We have gray sleeper sofas. So you'll also want to create subcategories for the different types of sleeper sofa or whatever you sell. And so we do this oftentimes where we will find that we have more SEO content with more internal links. So we're linking it all together because Google is a robot that it's a web crawler. It's gonna crawl the page, click on all the links. Remember, SEO is just content and links. We have corner sofa bed, and then we scroll down and then we have more content, more internal links, and everything has correct header structure. This is a genius SEO behind this website. I love to see it. So that's step one. Really, you could spend half a year on that if you have a huge website like ikea just making sure those collection pages are correct then we check out their product pages which typically aren't going to rank as well so if we go back to SEM rush we can look at what pages are getting the most traffic it's typically going to be these collection pages so categories as they're called here slash slash category there will be some uh, products, but almost all of these are slash categories. So products are less important for SEO rankings, but they're still critical. Um, they're going to be supporting the rest of uh, the collection pages. So right off the bat, we see a breadcrumb structure. These add internal links back to that sofa bed page so that that strengthens that sofa bed page by adding an internal link from this page to that page. It adds, adds as a vote of confidence. And let's see here, we have three C sofas and we have a whole nice structure here that's adding internal links. Love to see that. We have a lot of great images, great CRO happening. And then we have product details with a lot of content here, which should be crawlable by Google. Just to confirm that we can copy this and we can check the view page source. Control F. Ooh, and it looks like it's actually not potentially not crawlable by Google. Uh, so Google may find this, it may not. If it's not in the view page source, Google may have a hard time finding it, which should be a reason why all, there's actually pretty much very few or or no uh, product categories ranking or product pages ranking there. Um, so that's one potential issue. Let's see if there's any more content here. And so their product pages could use a little bit more unique content. You need to have unique content on your product pages. Google's getting stricter and stricter about this. And those are two big, big points that I want to stress in this overview. Uh, of course, there are other points. So on a huge website like this, you have a lot of website structure to go over. So how are they actually organizing these collections into different you know, settings? So baby and kids, you then go to kids, and then you go to toys for kids. These are all internal links. They have SEO content all over the place, as we can see, and they're doing this extremely well. IKEA is doing what is called internal link siloing, or topical clusters is another word for this. What this means is that they are linking together relevant similar pages so that Googlebot can constantly be crawling those relevant pages and establish authority within a certain industry, a certain niche or subcategory. To simplify it, they're linking couches with couches, love seats with couches, similar products, similar product categories to similar product categories. And they're doing this at scale. They have thousands of pages all internally linking together 
so that when the Google Spider comes, it will crawl all of their pages in a relevant way. This is becoming extremely powerful and we've seen thousands of new organic customers just by implementing topical silos and internal linking into an e-commerce store. So if you are an e-commerce store and you haven't done siloing like Ikea, and God forbid you haven't done on-page like Ikea, then reach out to me or just comment below. We'll take a look at your website and show you how siloing and on-page can really be the easiest win for SEO for your company. Uh, but this on-page SEO stuff is really, really important. After that, you have backlinks. So all these pages are also getting backlinks, I imagine. So if we look here on the backlinks analytics, we can also tell that these, they're probably creating backlinks to these pages or just naturally getting them. And so each one of these sort of collection pages are likely getting backlinks. Let's actually go to that sofa bed or couch, one of these, go to twin bed frame. And we can actually look at this exact URL to see what kind of links are. Now, backlinks are a vote of confidence from one website to another website. So these are very important for, for establishing rankings on Google. You can see they have uh, 800 backlinks, 140 referring domains. Of course, a lot of these look to be spam, so you have to go through them and up. Almost all of them are spam. Let's see what we got here. No, so they don't have many, uh, many good backlinks. It looks like they may have a couple backlinks, um, but most of them are kind of, yeah, this one's broken or well, starting to come up, but they're pretty low quality. This is probably nothing that they built. They're probably relying primarily on the on-page SEO. Um, and then they're established authority by being IKEA. So since they're IKEA, they get so many links naturally to the website and they're doing the internal linking correctly, which we looked at briefly, they don't actually need to build too many backlinks. Now, if you're a smaller brand and you're not IKEA, the backlinks become much more important because people are naturally You do this on-page stuff and you're 90% of the way there. Well, my name is Patrick Rice. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you learned something from IKEA's strategy. Let me know if you want me to dig deeper into their backlink strategy and to various other stuff that they're doing. Of course, their technical SEO, which might take me a day and a half to really get through. All of this is important pieces of the puzzle for SEO domination. So let me know what you're curious about. What do you want to learn? We're doing videos several times a week or at least once a week. <laughs> Bear with me. As we establish this channel, I want to keep you guys engaged. So let me know. Thank you so much for your time. Like if you did gain any value. Subscribe if you want to see the growth and evolution of this channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.